Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name's Omar and I am now a third year medical student at the University of Nottingham and today I'm going to be doing a Q&A covering all the questions you have submitted on my Instagram poll that I put up. Wow, you guys had a lot of questions, but we're going to get through them all and hopefully you'll leave this video feeling a little bit more reassured and motivated about medical school. So please leave a huge like, comment down below and subscribe. Before we get into the video, I just wanted to address the huge elephant in the room, which is the quality of this video. My camera is broken, it's at the repair shop, so I am filming on my iPhone, so please bear with. But anyway, let's get into the video, it's going to be a good one. So my tips for this question is one, do not do any further reading unless it is compulsory. Many of you may know that in first year when we had to revise the mediastinum, the first thing I did was go to my nearest clinical anatomy textbook, open up the chapters of the mediastinum and literally write a 2000 word document on everything to do with the mediastinum. To this day, I have no idea what I wrote and I've never had to refer back to those notes. So do not do any further reading. You will find information that, that you do not know and that you do not need to know at this stage. So stick to what's on the lecture. My second tip is to keep it concise. Don't write things you already know. And I think this is a trap we all fall into because we're all busy writing every single thing the lecture says. For example, I remember I came home from my very first lecture um, in, at medical school and they were basically introducing the components of the cell stuff we've been doing since year seven and i hand drew a diagram of a cell writing what the nucleus did what the cell membrane did did i need to do that no was it a waste of my time yes um so only write what you do not know my third tip is to not worry too much about presentation. I know you'll see on YouTube all these lovely pastel highlighted, you know, calligraphy style notes. As long as it's legible and readable, you'll be fine. Save your time to revise or go out and have fun. Okay, so it took two years of trial and error to find resources which genuinely helped me. Um, so the first one, that I really recommend is osmosis. So this will help you with anatomy, physiology, and pharmacology. And why I really like them is that they have videos that kind of introduce different topics. So your lectures will tend to deep dive and go down rabbit holes, but sometimes you just need to know the basics and they're really good at explaining that. And obviously their animations make it easier to understand. Um, also, they have really good concise notes. So if you're looking to create concise lecture notes, you can sometimes just get away with copying from osmosis. For anatomy, I really recommend a mixture of Teach Me Anatomy and Tamara's Notes. So Tamara's Notes was written by a fifth year medical student at the University of Nottingham. It is a really good, concise um, introduction to anatomy. The only caveat to this is obviously it is handwritten diagrams. So sometimes you will need to practice memorizing anatomical landmarks but from different planes from different views so if you go onto the teach me anatomy website um you can kind of get a better grasp of different parts of the body but be careful because teach me anatomy has so much information on there and you don't need to know it all at this stage so i have three tips that i've realized over the two years have really helped me keep up with the increased workload now in first year many of you will know that i really struggled i kind of was expecting to just get medical school because well i'd done really well at a level and i was like i really want to be a doctor so not that it's going to be easy but it's going to be straightforward you know i'm just going to work really hard and it'll be fine but okay i had the motivation but i didn't have a strategy and i soon became really overwhelmed stopped going out just stayed in my room it would take me hours and hours to do the lectures that I had to do and honestly I wasn't learning a single thing. My first tip, have a good daily routine, okay? What I mean by this is get up early and go to bed early. When I get up at like 10, start working at like 11, 12, I find that I don't have enough time to get my work done. I go to bed really late because everything gets shifted and then I get up late. My second tip is to cheat. Now, what I mean by this is Medicine isn't a subject where you have to come up with new opinions, etc. Ask anyone in older years if you can have their notes on a specific lecture. Um, even ask your 
people, the people on your course. So yeah, I really recommend getting notes from others um, at times just to save you some time. For most people, lectures are still online. You can ask any question and you don't need to feel embarrassed. You don't need to feel mortified about putting your hand up in a lecture hall with 300 people. You can just type it in, the lecturer will see it when they have time and they'll answer it. And it doesn't matter how silly it is, honestly, they won't remember you. So you might as well just ask a question if that's if that means that that's the thing stopping you from understanding a concept. So just ask it, type it away. If this isn't possible, then I would keep writing the lecture and then after um, try and edit my lecture. Maybe I was just didn't have time to assimilate the information and maybe by rewording it, rejigging and organizing the lecture, you'll understand. Or read up on Wikipedia, read up on osmosis or something about the topic and maybe there'll be a key point there that will help piece everything together for you. Everyone is going to be probably not only excited and wanting to make friends, but also quite nervous and anxious. So instead of waiting around for someone else to organize something or to bring people together, and I know this is harder to say than do, you need to sometimes just be the driving force to bring people together. My second tip is to meet a lot of different people. So regretfully, soon the happiness and kind of you know excitement of freshers will run out and you'll realize that the people that you think you made friends with aren't necessarily going to be your friends for life and so for example if you stick to only talking to the people in your halls then if you fall out with them you won't really have made that many connections so make friends on your course go to your lectures go to any seminar groups you have start talking to people there join societies that you're interested in seriously if you're ever going to have time to do this it is in first year um, join medical societies, join sports, because the more different people you meet, the more likely you are to meet people that you will be friends with for life or for a long time. Okay, this isn't really my scene, but what I've learned through countless hilarious conversations with friends is basically if you're looking to find something romantic or whatever at university and you're worried that this may not happen for you don't worry university is such a huge place that there will be someone out there for you the only thing obviously this is big sister advice so i have to say make sure if anything does happen it's consensual and that it is safe it is so much easier to be safer in the moment than to have to deal with any consequences. One of my best friends now at university literally missed the whole of freshers because she got a terrible bout of freshers flu. And there will be people that regretfully have to isolate or can't go to freshers. Um, and my tips of socializing if you miss the period of freshers, which is kind of like a period in university where everyone's number one goal is to make friends and to go out. People don't want to stop making friends once fresher ends, freshers ends. So don't think, oh my God, these people are already best of friends. I can't suddenly you know wedge myself in between these already formed friendships that is a completely like negative way of thinking i mean i only really started to make friends on my course at the end of second year so it doesn't matter how late on in the course it happens um my tip for this is to definitely join societies i feel like societies is a good environment to kind of have to work closely with people doing something fun and obviously some societies have socials i mean i remember literally being like i can't join a society like i didn't attend the freshers fair i didn't attend the first session remember if you join a society late it will literally be awkward for the first 30 seconds you walk in and everyone looks at you because no one knows who you are and you have to be like oh sorry this is um i signed up late am i in the right place after those awkward 30 seconds are over, no one will care. You'll just be part of the society. Um, and it will be something that's definitely fun, that will recharge you, and you'll make great memories joining a society. So I really recommend this. I think if you're in this situation, it will require you being a bit more like proactive in trying to make these friendships. My first tip is to know how much time you have. So I really suggest that you get Google Calendar or any other kind of calendar app. The reason I say this, because you will easily be able to see, right, this, these are my commitments, these are my deadlines. I can't do anything that overlaps with this and also will allow you to easily identify when your free time is so you can make the most of it. My second tip is to be aware of Parkinson's law. And this is a law that Ali Abdal mentions quite a lot, which is the idea that tasks will take up the time that you assign for them to take. So if you say, oh, at some point this morning, I'll tidy my room, it will take the whole morning to tidy your room because you 
are under the impression that you just have loads of free time to do it. Sometimes that bit of pressure will help you get things done quicker. Work into your weekly routine, time to do things that are good for your mental and physical health and things that are social and things that you enjoy. Allocate time to going to the gym or being active every week. Allocate time to spending time with your housemates, your flatmates or your friends. I remember I used to time block, which meant that every week I'd block off Friday evenings to spend time with my friends. I also started time blocking my days after 8 p.m. and I left that time to completely relax, to make dinner, to watch Netflix. By actively allocating time to do these things into your weekly schedule, it means that it forces you to not let work bleed over into that time. Because if you sacrifice doing things that are good for your mental and physical health, that will benefit you socially, you'll feel like you're constantly working and you'll burn out. You need time to recharge, to re-energize yourself so that when you come to your next study session, you feel motivated and you feel like you can really work hard. What you'll find by doing this is that it takes you less time to study and you study more effectively. So I juggle a lot of part-time jobs whilst being at uni. But the reason I'm able to is because the part-time jobs that I have are ones that I can fit around my schedule. I don't really recommend getting a shift job because your manager will require you to be there at certain days, certain times. And regretfully, you can't predict how hectic medical school is gonna get. So what I recommend is doing something like tutoring because you have more control of your, over your timetable and you can kind of fit it around your workload. I know friends that do uh, things like Uber Eats and delivery, which is really good because if you just happen to have a few hours extra that day, you can go out and make some money easily. I also really recommend working for the university so the university will have some jobs in COVID testing or in the student union because they're usually very conscious that obviously students have their own workload and timetable. So I've actually answered this question before so I'm just going to replay a little clip to show you what my usual timetable in first and second year looked like. So Monday as you can see I have three lectures. Tuesday I have two lectures, one of them is two hours though. Wednesday I have a seminar, Thursday I have two lectures, Friday I have a workshop all morning and then a two hour lecture in the evening. So as you can see, it's not that much. However, as I told you, what is a two hour lecture covers so much content. Your timetable, definitely more freer than your A-level timetable, it's not nine to five, but you will end up need, needing to work a lot to be able to feel comfortable with the content. When I got to medical school, I did not anticipate how boring it could get especially in your preclinical years where you're just watching lecture after lecture after lecture of things like genes and cells what i really recommend is that you get involved in super curriculars this means activities that are related to medicine but beyond what you're doing so what i did is i had to think about what specialties i really enjoy so i really enjoy psychiatry and i'd kind of had some exposure to anesthesiology in first year through an optional module so i thought okay let's sign up to these societies it is really motivating because in first year when i said i was really overwhelmed and i really stopped enjoying the course by going to meet the psychiatrist and by attending lectures on psychiatry or anesthesiology that i found really interesting it kind of told me you know what this is what you're working towards don't worry there are four exam techniques that I recommend, or rather four steps to exam revision that I found really effective. They helped me to get a first last year, which I was very happy with. Up here is a little playlist to my exam season where you can see me revise for exams and you can see me react to my results, so definitely go check it out. The first step that I'd recommend is creating a retrospective timetable. Instead of writing out all your topics and saying, I'm gonna do this day, this on this day, this on that day, what you do is write out all your topics and rank them um, using the traffic light system. Highlight which are your worst topics in red and you highlight in amber the topics that you're so-so in and you highlight in green the topics that you're confident in. Then what you do is that you assign days to the topics you're worst at. Over time, these reds will turn amber and green until eventually you will have covered all the topics and you'll feel confident in all of them. This is good because you usually just assign dates to different topics, but regretfully some topics you will struggle with a lot more than others and it's important that you tackle these first and more often. The most important step is to do active recall. So if you can try and do any of the mock tests that teachers set for you 
um, even create some of your own questions and answer them um, once you've finished revising a lecture. I have to admit, something that I really hate about medical school exams, especially early years medical school exams, is that the questions can be really specific sometimes. So sometimes I remember we had a question on like a very specific molecular receptor in the like diabetic pathway, which was literally one line out of the 250 lectures we'd had that year. However, I think if you revise the general concept of different topics, you will be able to do well and you can afford to kind of miss or not do so well in those hyper-specific questions. No, no, no way, you don't need to. These question banks that you find on QuesMed, on PassMed, I, these are for literally final year medical students. There will be patient cases where you have to prescribe, you have to diagnose, and especially in your first and second year, even third year, you have to be focusing on memorizing key bits of information and memorizing facts, not applying them just yet. And I actually got this advice from my medic parent. That brings me to the end of the q and A. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. I hope you feel a bit more reassured and motivated to start medical school. If I did help you, even if it is just a tiny bit, please make sure to leave a like, comment down below what you enjoyed or what you learned, or if you have any tips on medical school, and remember to subscribe and check out my Instagram, and I will see you in the next one, hopefully with a working camera. Bye.